Shakur Stevenson says he's going to wait until there's a big opportunity before he considers unretiring. That's what I want to break down. That's what I want to talk about right now in this video. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. In a brand new interview with Fight Hype, Shakur Stevenson talks about his quote-unquote retirement. Now, I told you in the first and only video I did about Shakur Stevenson being retired that I think it's all cap. I definitely don't think he's retired. I think he's frustrated trying to get a big fight or big opportunity. He doesn't feel like he's being prioritized. And he's seeing other people in or around his weight class or age bracket and they're getting better opportunities. So I think that's what it is. That's my personal opinion. In this interview with Fight Hype, Shakur Stevenson says, quote, I'm waiting for the opportunity for me to come out of retirement. I got a WBC belt, so all roads lead to undisputed being at 135. It come through me. We can already see them unifying Lomachenko and Navarrete fight. They can't become the undisputed champion without coming to get the WBC strap off of me. They could do whatever they want, but I'm still going to be right here waiting on everybody. My opportunity got to come. There's no way of becoming undisputed at 135 without one of these dudes coming to see me. Shakur Stevenson continues, It has a lot to do with the fighters don't want to fight me. You don't hear anybody saying they want to negotiate and become WBC champion, and I think that's a weird thing. You don't hear nobody wanting to step up and fight for that WBC strap. Fight me. He's saying to Ryan Garcia, You'll get plenty of notoriety for being a boxer. If you're not going to fight Devin Haney and you're going to fight someone we've never heard of, go on and be an Instagram model. And that's because Shakur Stevenson, he actually did a back and forth battle with Ryan Garcia the other day. So. Ego thoughts. My opinion is I am so thankful and so fortunate to be of the generation that I am a part of. I think one thing, this new generation, they don't do everything wrong. You know, some of them are risk takers. They know technology, different things like that. So there is some upside. But one thing that I think by and large, a lot of people in this younger generation, they do wrong is almost too emo and too emotional and to me i like to be more meticulous and thought out and strategic the art of war sun tzu you know general Patton, like a strategist when it comes to doing stuff and i think this new generation since we live in such a microwave society tiktok society where people's attention span it could be two or four seconds before they're doom scrolling to the next clip and with that immediate and instant gratification creates problems because people are constantly seeking dopamine. I have a quote that I said many moons ago, years ago, and I've heard other people say it after me, but everybody wants to be Money Mayweather without going through the Pretty Boy Floyd stages. And that's just not simply how it works. And I think it's getting worse and worse with this new generation because they want results and they want it quick it's like everybody wants to be a superstar everybody want to be lit everybody want the jewelry and the diamonds coming through this muff looking like shaka zulu with the jewelry on but all that stuff takes time like and i, I feel like there's a void in the game of young fighters who are sub 30 years old and really trying to pave that path and go through what it takes to be like Oscar De La Hoya and Floyd Mayweather and things like that, where they're going through the boot camp, if you will, or obstacle course before they just like want, want, want. And I think that's part of their generation because they don't know anything else. If you're of a certain age, movies have pretty much since you've been at a point where you would watch movies, they've been streaming. So you didn't have to go get dropped off and go to a movie theater to watch movies or you didn't have to stand in a line to get some shoes you can order online or you didn't have to wait for a cd to drop 
now they might drop the album at midnight and you could just stream it. But before, back in the day, like in my generation, it was different. You would have things where if Tupac or whoever, Jay-Z had an album, Fabulous had an album, and it came out on Tuesday, you would go after school or whatever and cop that album. Now you can just stream Nicki Minaj or Ice Spice new album at midnight and you don't have to leave your house. You can hear the album at midnight through streaming. And I think that has brought in some attitudes, even in boxing and in the world at large, where people just want everything and they want instant gratification. Shakur Stevenson, another reason why to me, this, this whole situation looks kind of bad for Shakur is because he's coming off of arguably, if not the worst performance of his career. Like he just simply put, did not look great in that fight with Edwin De Los Santos, right? Edwin De Los Santos, he didn't look amazing either. However, he was a guy, he got like 15, 16 fights or whatever. So he's a guy under 20 fights and he's not named Shakur Stevenson. So the onus is on usually the A-side and the bigger fighter. He was the guy, Edwin De Los Santos, who from a skill point of view, People didn't rate his skill like they rated Shakur Stevenson. He's not a U.S. Olympian and things like that. He fought on enemy territory, ESPN. He wasn't the A side. He was the B side, right? So I think a lot of that fight and how it played out and how it looked went on Shakur Stevenson's shoulders. And it looks like ever since that moment, he's kind of taken it really harsh and really negatively. And now he's also doing the retirement and announcing his retirement and I, I find it very weird that i don't think that this retirement is real i highly doubt that he never steps foot in the ring under any circumstances again and he hasn't come out and declare like hey i was just joking hey i was just frustrated he's just kind of left it at he's retired but then there's videos and pictures of him in a boxing gym still training boxing so for me i feel like that's that's kind of weird with this new generation again i feel a man has to be congruent with his thoughts you tell everybody you're retired but then you're training in the gym and you're making it sound like hey i'll only come back out and pop out for the right opportunity but the play you've already declared it the play is likely lomachenko versus navarate and i get it you're saying they have to come through you but I mean, how long do you have to wait? You're going to have to just keep waiting and waiting and waiting for an opportunity. And he's not really in a position of power, but it sounds like he's trying to act like he's in a position of power, if that makes sense. Like pump faking, in my opinion, it's a pump fake that he's retired. I don't really think he's retired, but pump faking that you're retired and you think that's going to stop top rank? They're still going to make the fight with Lomachenko and Navarrete if they win, if Lomachenko beats Cambosis, and if Navarrete wins his next fight in a title and a unification. So what what is this fake retirement, in my opinion, fake retirement, what does it truly do? Like, how does this gain momentum for you? Again, a lot of momentum from the Shakur Stevenson train was lost, in my opinion, from what I've seen in the Edwin De Los Santos fight. So pretending you're absent from the sport totally and retired, to me, that's not really a resolution. That doesn't really do anything to help you going forward. If anything, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. And he's talking about I'll unretire when the opportunity comes, but don't you have one more fight with top rank, right? So you're still gonna be under contract for a long time if you just wait 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 and don't get that fight out of the out of the way the other issue is by retiring in my view it doesn't really put Shakur in a position of power like what does it really do for him to strengthen his leverage you know especially when you look through the comments on the post where he said he was retiring people are like good stay gone stay retired you are boring and you know it, it just makes it look kind of outlandish and it makes you look almost emo in a sense where you're getting criticism from your last fight and now you're like threatening to retire and things like that 
but it doesn't really do anything to strengthen your position and make you a bigger brand or anything like that. So it just it looks almost like an emotional, not thought out response to frustration because people seemingly like like, for example, when Michael Jordan retired in the 90s and went and had a stint in baseball, he was at the top of his game and it was at the peak of his game. So I'm sure that impacted the Chicago Bulls. There was less jersey and ticket sales and season ticket holders and things of that sort because Michael Jordan was the Michael Jordan in the NBA and he was the biggest thing in the NBA, right? So his absence, people like develop a fondness or man, man, I miss the NBA when Jordan was playing because of his absence. But Shakur is not the same thing. He's coming off his worst performance and then he's trying to have like a writer's strike. So again, 48 Laws of Power, Sun Tzu and the Art of War you got to almost do these things if this is your stance and you're going to protest in such a way you have to do it at your peak you can't really do it at a point where people hated your last fight and now you're retired if that makes sense to you guys to make people really like miss you you got to do like i said with michael jordan in the 90s bulls when he retired or even floyd mayweather after he knocked out ricky hatton he not he had a great performance knocked out Ricky Hatton and retired for 21 months. And I think he even did Dancing with the Stars and things like that. So at that point, that made Floyd a bigger brand because he was still visible on Dancing with the Stars. And he was undefeated off of a great performance, knocking Ricky Hatton into the turnbuckle. So it made him more of a commodity. Shakur, again, as I keep saying, he's coming off his worst performance with Edwin De Los Santos that people said was boring or put him to sleep or wasn't either guy's best work and then this is when he's pulling it so for me again i keep saying this new generation because i think this is like the decision making of this new generation and they're more quick to do something like this where it's sporadic they didn't get the the response they wanted or whatever so they hastily quit a job and not look at the big picture you know say you're gonna quit and then people are roasting you because you're only in boxing at least you're only as good as your last performance so I don't think this really helps Shakur Stevenson right now in the timing of it to announce this retirement and then saying, hey, I'm, you know, going to sit on the sidelines until I get a big opportunity. I mean, when is that going to come instead of just like bouncing back and continuing to fight, make people forget almost through other great performances about the Edwin De Los Santos fight and keep it trucking, arguing you're supposed to be retired, but you're arguing with Ryan Garcia. Again, none of this stuff seems meticulously thought out to me. And maybe that's just the strategist in me. I just don't really see the aim and what Shakur Stevenson gains right now by doing this. Let me know what you guys think. Subscribe to my channel, Boxing All Day Every Day 24-7. The future is now. The Hibernation Fives by Kenichi Bear. Hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones. Out of the box, you can connect to any console or PC. Bluetooth ready with a low latency USB adapter, color RGB, and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation 5s adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel, gym, or lifestyle headphones, the Hibernations got you covered. The new Hibernation 5s, link in the description. Customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation.